Paper Mario the Origami King released nearly two years ago, and it was generally seen as both a breath of fresh air for the series and a half-step that didn't entirely deliver. Personally, even though I preferred the first three games, Origami King was a very fun and enjoyable game. There were a lot of things that I enjoyed about it, including memorable characters, unique locations, and some aspects of the gameplay. However, I do have a few problems with the game in terms of both gameplay and other aspects, and in this video, I will address how I think they could possibly be reworked. Also, it's worth noting that these are just my opinions, and it's completely okay if you disagree with some of the things I mention. That being said, let's take a look at some of the ways that I would improve Paper Mario The Origami King. After two games of being completely absent, Partners finally made somewhat of a comeback in Origami King. While story-wise, they did work very well, and are generally good additions to the plot overall, they do feel lackluster on the gameplay side of things. Unlike Paper Mario 64 or The Thousand Year Door, you can't control them in battle, as they automatically do a move for you without any input. This really isn't that bad considering the fact that there's only one move per partner, but there's definitely a lot of missed potential. Having a system where you would be able to control them would be very helpful, since you could obtain new moves for the partners like in previous games. A way they could handle this is by having dedicated shops like the accessories and selling moves for certain partners. Another improvement for the partners is allowing them to stay with you after their respective chapters, since they can increase the overall depth of the battle system. Obviously, certain ones like Bobby or Bowser Jr. likely wouldn't be able to stay with you for story-related reasons, but the rest of them could work if they stuck with you. During story cutscenes, with certain characters, they could possibly automatically pull out the partner needed for that moment. Even partners that were barely used, like Bone Goomba or Spike, could possibly be worked into a permanent partner, kind of like how the Thousand Year Door in Super Paper Mario had optional partners. The fact that the partners were brought back in Origami King was promising, but there was definitely a lot of missed potential. One defining feature of most RPGs and RPG-style games is experience points and leveling up your character. The first three Paper Mario games had this, and it worked fairly well since it gave players an incentive to battle. However, in Sticker Star onwards, they removed the leveling system entirely, meaning that you could only earn coins or items from battling enemies. Sticker Star and Color Splash had a very inconsistent and weird system where you had to try to have enough attacks with you at all times, and often, it discouraged you from battling enemies since you had to save your attacks for a boss. Thankfully, Origami King somewhat improved this system by giving you a permanent boot and hammer attack like the first two games and make coins more important. While this system is a bit more functional than the previous two games, it doesn't really give you that much of an incentive to battle enemies since you could find coins in the overworld and the progression didn't really feel rewarding. On top of that, max up hearts don't feel very practical, and it feels like you're progressing artificially like it was in Sticker Star. A way that they can improve this is by removing the max up hearts entirely and replacing them with star points or some form of EXP. That way, it will feel more rewarding to battle enemies and you actually slowly progress throughout the game. On top of upgrading HP, they could also automatically increase the attack power and give you the option to increase weapon durability or even the max confetti. An EXP system would definitely benefit the game since it's stuck in a weird limbo between an RPG and an action-adventure game and it would also help to create a more natural progression system. One thing that added a level of depth to the battles in the previous Paper Mario games are the status effects. Basically, it's a condition put on the player that temporarily affects gameplay and can include things such as poison, burn, or electrified. In Origami King, outside of a few gimmicks, there really aren't any status effects. While this doesn't really hinder the gameplay at all, the addition of status effects would add a decent amount of depth and strategy to the battle system. 
The battle system in Origami King overall is decently fun, but it's mostly focused on the puzzles rather than actual combat. After a while, the combat can feel a bit stale, because all you have to worry about is the enemy if the enemy is normal, spiked, or flying, and the current position that they are in. The addition of status effects would help enemies feel more varied, since certain enemies could inflict different status effects onto Mario. The player could also inflict certain status effects onto enemies, or use an item that could potentially benefit the effect onto the player. This would definitely help the combat feel more in-depth, and it would make the player think more beyond the puzzle portion of the battle. Like I mentioned previously with status effects, battles would feel more interesting overall if there was a bit more emphasis on the combat side of things rather than just with the puzzles. Another way that the combat can be improved is through more items and accessories. The amount of items in the game is very limited, since there are only 6 items, with different variations of each item. Items feel like an afterthought in this game, and combat would definitely be improved if there was a wider selection of items. Older Paper Mario items, such as the Sleepy Sheep, Thunder Rage, and Earthquake, and even modern Paper Mario items like the Leaf, Spike, and Helmet, and Frog Suit, would have increased the range of combat options in battle. On top of the items, more accessories would improve the gameplay as well. Accessories work sort of as a pseudo-badge-like item that can be equipped to enhance stats. This item really felt too simple since it only had three upgrade tiers and three different stats. Different accessories that could have different conditions like badges would have been a more functional and fleshed out system. For example, there could be one that increases Mario's attack power when he has low HP, or one that makes it easier for enemies to miss. Overall, a more expansive number of items and a more fleshed out accessory system would greatly improve the combat in battles. My biggest issue with Origami King and modern Paper Mario games in general has to be the character restrictions. In the first three games, they were allowed to use a wide cast of NPCs that really made the areas feel like living and breathing worlds. Ever since Sticker Star though, the NPCs and enemies have been restricted to only the ones used in the mainline Mario games and sometimes even the new Super Mario Bros games. This has made the games feel more generic and safe compared to the previous entries, and is one of the reasons why the fanbase is so split nowadays. Origami King has improved things slightly, but there still isn't much variety when it comes to character designs. There seems to be a lot of loopholes that the developers have to work around in order to make the games interesting, like make original characters 3D rather than flat paper characters, or give them a somewhat unique design while giving them a generic name. It seems obvious that at this point the devs probably want to make a game that's more unique and creative, but can't because of the restrictions in place. Getting rid of these restrictions altogether would have greatly improved this game, since it would have made the locations feel more, more immersive and would have made it easier for players to connect with the various characters. Seeing an endless amount of nameless toads is honestly pretty annoying, since they basically seem like these minion-esque clones that tell you a single joke when you interact with them. When you give them varied designs and outfits and unique personalities, it starts to become more relatable and immersive since it's easier for the players to connect with. The story characters also should have been a, a bit more unique as well since they have a lot of significance in the game. For example, rather than doing a palette swap of the Earth Elemental Curator and the DJ, give them different outfits that make them more distinct. Unique names would have also helped since basically every Toad character, with the exception of Professor Toad and Captain Toad, are named after their literal job or role. Overall, making characters more unique and creative would have made the game feel more immersive and interesting overall. Anyways, those are the ways that I would improve Paper Mario the Origami King. Unlike the Thousand Year Door like in the last video, Origami King really doesn't need to be re-released anytime soon, 
but a lot of these could apply for the next Paper Mario game if they're gonna have a similar formula to the Origami King. So anyways, how would you improve Paper Mario the Origami King? Let me know down in the comments. And anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.